investa. Ang stocks, parang book lang yan. Minsan, kailangan mo mag-cut. What's up mga ka-investa? So, naita yun sa video, no? nag-try ako mag-pa-semical bullet. So, medyo sakto lang. Yung nanay ko, tsaka pins ako gumawa. So, shout out sa nila. Salamat guys for putting up with me. So, noon na medyo palpak, pero naayos naman. Tapos, yung taas, kaya mo medyo may muhok kasi yung huling ganun, nakalimutan i-ganun yung, ano, yung, yung gitna. Kaya yun, medyo mahaba yung taas, pero okay naman. Papa, ikalbo na lang after one month. So, in relation to this video, na um, nagpagupit ako, nagkat ako, in this video, we're going to be talking about ano nga ba yung importance sa risk management? Ano nga ba yung, for those hindi pa alam, ano nga ba yung cut loss, cut loss, aragi narinig? Puro lang cut loss, cut loss, cut loss. So, in this video, titigyan natin ano nga ba yung risk management and basic position sizing. What's up guys? So, now, papag-usapan natin. So, ngayon, iniba ko na, medyo ginawa ko ng slideshow. So, let's talk about um, two very, very important uh, things you need to know, especially if you are a beginning trader. It's risk management and position sizing. So, we're going to be doing a module called Risk Management and Position Sizing 101. Diba? Alright, so let's begin. Alright, so ideally, right, bef um, before I talk about these topics, you should know a little bit about technical analysis by now. So, you um. You need to know a little bit about support and resistance, breakouts and breakdowns, volume, or maybe a few indicators, moving average, RSI, MACD. But at the end of the day, yeah. So price structure trading, kailang alam mo na di man need sobrang advanced, right? As long as you know at least support and resistance, breakouts, breakdowns. At least if you know those, right? How they work, diba? How do you trade them? Um, pwede mo na panoorin to. But if you don't know them yet, you can just check out our YouTube channel. May mga topics kami about that. Right? And you can, if for further, right, learning resources or if you want to learn about the things I mentioned and more, you can check out Investor Daily. So, sobrang dami namin articles dyan from basic, right, what is the stock market, what is technical and fundamental analysis to, you know, basic trading strategies, how to find your winning setup to trading the global markets, right? So, sobrang solid yung content dyan. And then we also have free learning videos on our YouTube channel. So, medyo hindi na-updated yung poster ito, no? Sobrang dami na new videos. So, you can watch uh, charting sessions, trading 101, basic TA, actual trade dissections, mayroon business topics, yung conversations with traders, and then yun. So, spot nyo na lang to, marami kayo pwede matutunan dito. And today, um, today is uh, June 15, right? So, Monday, ipopost to. So, hindi pala June 15, 15 today, June 15 siya ipopost. Right? So, mag-start na yung Investor Pro League. So, shout out sa lahat na sumali and good luck sa inyo. And quick plug ko lang, no? Um, lapit na, June, ano, um, June 27. Right? Yung Invest Online Summit natin. So, ito na. So, kung di pa kayo nakabili ng, ano nyo, yung access to Invest Online Summit, I suggest, no, spot nyo lang. Tigan nyo kung gusto nyo. As you can see, our speaker, line up, our speaker lineup, we have some of the best local traders um, fund and fund managers in the Philippines. We have global traders. We have a momentum master. We have a market wizard. Right? And then we also have some of the best right, business people in their respective industries in the Philippines part here as well. So, hindi lang puro trading, you also learn stuff about business. So, I highly suggest, right? And the best thing about this is you can learn at your own pace, at your own time, at your own homes. Right? So, highly suggest sa sumali kayo. And lastly, we have our Independence Day promo. Kung din nyo pa nakita, you were given 122 gift um, Vesa Wallet credits. Right? And we will be giving it out every week. So, spot nyo na lang yung mekan. So, yung first 122 pesos, binigay na namin. So, spot nyo na lang yung post. Yung one of our recent posts on how to claim um, the next, yung second and third tranches ng 122 Investor Wallet credits. And note lang guys, um, this is only up to June 30. So, after June 30, di nyo pwede gamitin to. And the, um, the credits can only be used on products um, priced 1,000 pesos and above. Diba? Alright. Alright. Let's begin. What is risk management? So I won't be so na ito yung slide show to, no? but I won't be giving the usual, eh, the usual na text, text, whatever. I'll be showing you guys a lot of chart examples, right? So when you enter the stock market, or maybe you're someone who saw a seminar a few years ago, and then nakita niyo active ko yung post on content, you want to learn a thing or two about the stock market. The first picture always painted in your mind is the opportunities shown in the stock market. Is the is the potential to exponentially compound your capital is how the stock market is the ultimate equalizer of wealth which is all 100% true here's a common example shown kung sasabihin sa mga usual na seminar kung mahilig ka mag Jollibee uh, mag ka na bumili chicken joy lagi invest ka na lang kikita ka pa 
and in the, and from 2009 to 2019, um, Jollibee went up 800%. And note, th this took a decade to happen. So 800% and solid yan pero 10 years bago nagmaterialize, di ba? And note also, wala namang bank na magbibigay ng ganitong return. So solid na rin, di ba? 10 years, 800%. Pero baka nagsasabi kayo na, ay grabe, 800%, 10, isang dekada? Di ko, di ko gusto ng ganun, gusto ko double your money, kagad. So if you want double your money, ito, ito yung mga examples na may kita mo, di ba? So you have dito, going up 142% in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 days. Right? So almost double your money in 7 days. Baka sabihin naman, oh, ayaw naman ng ano, ng, handay pa ako sa linggo, gusto ko automatic. Sige, kahit di double your money, kahit mga 84% lang. O sige, ito. Right? If you bought this at support, di ba? After ito, two, or kaya sa breakout, after two days, sumangat niya, mga 80%. So, two days, almost double your money. Right? And wala na akong papakita na one day na umakat 100%. Kasi may ceiling tayo sa Philippines sa 50%, di ba? So, yan. Yan yung mga, um, when you jump into trading, or let's say you jump into the stock market, right? Whether it's via a seminar, via post you see on Facebook, via communities, the almost some of the first things you're gonna see are, are the upside, right? All of the good times. Right, let me give you another example. You 800, gusto ko malapit sa 800%, pero gusto ko sa isang buwan lang ito. Now, 600%, halos one month lang or a month and a half. Right, from 3 pesos to 20 pesos. We all know the story, 600%. Right, so, ito yung mga opportunities talaga, stock market. If you're able to study well, prepare well, you have a strategy, you can take advantage of these types of moves and you can exponentially compound your capital. Right? Something no bank will ever give you is a 600% return in one month, right? Or a month and a half. Right? Let me give you another example. Let's say Haven. You learned a few, uh, a thing or two about technical analysis and then you see a stock like this. Right? It goes up from 22, breaks out, goes up to 32. Uh, break out, and the next day, yan, grabe, last ulit, umakit ng 48 pesos, di ba? Kasi, note, I'm showing this example kasi baka may nagsabi. Grabe, si, ano, now, 600, ano, 600%, 30 days, wala bang... Wala bang mas malupit dyan? Ito pa, mga pare, ito yung malupit. So you see, it breaks out and it continues to go higher from 22 to 75, right? You know, just 4 days. After that, it goes even higher again in 1, 2, 3, 4, in 5 days. Goes up 300% in 5 days, mga chong. Saka makakita niyan. And what does it do after it consolidates? So this is the reason why I want you guys to know a little bit about support, resistance, and breakouts. Because what you can do here... It's a this is what you call a pause day, so you can buy on support or you can buy on the breakout of resistance. After that, it breaks out, goes breaks 100, goes to 128. It continues to go continues to go higher, continues to go higher, and then the consolidate naman. Ito mas obvious na. So yan, plot your support, plot your resistance, find you know whatever area you want to buy. Right, you can buy on support 154, 155, or buy on the breakout of 180. And it breaks out again, and long story short, went up 1,745.68% in about 23 days, I believe. Less than a month, almost 2,000%. Yeah, but here's the thing. The, this, these types of trades, these types of investments, of profits, are what you're going to see initially when you come into the stock market. Right? If you attend a usual investing seminar, it's going to be more of a longer time frame, yung mga 500% in 10 years, like I showed you in Jollibee. If you're joining trading, if you join FB groups, if you join communities, right? Not all communities, just some, right? Or whatever, may nakita kang post sa Facebook na sinayon na tropa mo na si ganito ganyan, kumita ng 500% in a few, ano, or kumita ng 50% in one day. These are always the first types of posts you're going to see. The successes, the upside, the profits, and all the money you can make to achieve your wildest dreams. But what they don't show you, what people would not post on social media, what people would not discuss in basic introductor, introductory stock market seminars to people who have no idea how the stock market works is how, if ever they do, medyo ano lang, not everyone goes in detail, medyo minor lang na pwede magkalos, but no one shows charts like this. Right? When you start out, even me, when I started out, I saw all the upside. I never saw a stock, you know, be able to go down almost 100%. And they, I'm not bashing any stock. This is just facts, just data. CHP, we all know this. In two to th in three years, from whatever yung IPO price niya to high, right, it's down 91%. 
Lagay ka 100k, 99k na lang na iwan in 2 to 3 years. Right? Another example, X. Right? So, ito yung parang tech company of the Philippines, whatever. Tapos yan, from IPO price, umabot ata ng 20. Then from 20, I'm not sure, um, nag-error yung chart ko nung skin rin chat ko. Kasi mabagay na laptop ko. So, from 20, now it's it's at 60 cents. 97% drop. Put in 100,000, 3,000 na lang na iwan. Put in a million, ako ito ang tama yung math ko. Put in a million, 30,000 na lang na iwan. Something like that. So, this is the, this is reality. Ito yung picture na dapat pinipaint din na there's always gonna be downside. Then there's always gonna be stocks that go down, right, this much. Here, let me show you another example. Conventional wisdom and, conventional wisdom, yeah, would teach basic uh, who teach the newbies, who teach um, average people who just attended a basic stock market seminar is to invest in companies you know. Invest in companies that you think will not go bankrupt. Invest in some of the biggest companies in the country. Right? Again, this is no bashing, it's just facts. Let's take a look at PLDT. From tw Let's say you began investing in 2015 all the way to 2020. The stock went down 76.56%. Right? So, long term daw, right? Just keep putting, ano lang, 5,000 every month. Lagay ka lang, 5,000. Di mo na kailangan tignan yung chart. 5,000, eventually, angat din yan. Uh, take a look at this. And then, let's just say, for example, you just, just for the sake of argument lang. Obviously, if you put 5,000, it's average down ka na average down. It's called peso cost averaging. Siyempre, di, na, di ka na down 76%. Maybe your average is, if you started averaging down from 3,500 all the way to 1,000, baka yung average mo nasa 2,000 or something. Or 2,500. But, more or less, you're still down a lot of money because you kept throwing good money after bad. But for the sake of argument, let's say, nag-invest ka sa tuktok, sinawa ka mo lang. You're down 76%. Now, the question is, yung 5 years, long term na ba yan para sa'yo? The question is, can you handle the fact na 76% down ka na in 5 years and you probably, you don't know. And the thing is, they say na eventually, aangat din yan. But the question is, when will that eventually happen? That's something we cannot answer. Let me give you another example. San Miguel. Again, another big company in the Philippines. Right? From, again, for the sake of argument, you began investing in 2011. Sa tuktok, kinawa ka mo all the way down. From 2011 to 2016, about 7 years, you're down 76%. Can you really wait? So, 7 years down ka na? 7 years down. Right? Di ka pa kumikita niyan. Di pa ba long term? 6, 5, 6, 7 years? Then look ah. Guys, note, sa lower right. And yung bottom na yan. yung continuation niyan. And then, from 2016 to 2019, San Miguel went up 328%. Right? So, the question now is, you know, seeing all of this. Oh, and by the way, di ba, umaketch up, close to 200. Um, so, if you began investing at 2011, ginawa ka mo lang, wala ka na ibang ginawa. Um, for, by, 20, by late 2019, right, break even ka na, kumita ka pa 4%. But what happened after that? The market crashed, it went down another 62%. So this is what happens when you quote on um, when you quote unquote blindly invest. Blindly investing is simply buying any stock, a big company, just because you work there or just because you know it's a big company. Pinta mo dun nagtrabaho, solido is well do, or because di siya ma bankrupt in the next twenty years, de It doesn't mean a good company does not equal a good stock, right? And guys, um, note lang, I am not bashing long term investing, right? Long term investing works. And I mentioned ko sa live namin dati, in the right cycle. Right? Siyempre, if you invested in Jollibee at, at 10 pesos, diba? Tapos, hinawa ka mo lang hanggang 300. It's genius, diba? Baka talo pa yung mga traders pag nag-average down ka in that cycle. So, long-term investing works in different cycles of the market. Specifically, bull markets, right? Long-term, um, yeah, depending on sa, sa long-term bull markets, like from 2008 to 2020 or to 2018. Yeah, but blindly investing like this, that you don't know, you don't know anything, right? You just know it's a good company. That's black, called blindly investing. So for me, talaga, when you're doing long-term investing, it's good, especially if you're busy. But you need to know a little technical analysis. So pwede ang may onting alam kasi fundamentals. Then tapos say ano lang, simple lang, 200 moving average, right? 200 MA 200. So bibili mo. Tapos basap kapag above MA 200, the long-term uptrending moving average solid. Pero pag nag-close below, kahit sa weekly, weekly close below MA200, outs ka na, di ba? Or tayo mo end of week kung di nag-recover. But even as simple as that, 
that's where long-term investing can work. Okay, but examples like this, right? Yung mga conventional wisdom na ganito, this is not just, you know, peso cost average way to financial freedom. But note, ha? 2011, itong SMC example, 2011 to 2020, almost one decade, lost ka pa rin ng 62%. Assuming na 2011, tuktok ka nag-invest, at saka never mo binenta. Right? Or, kung binenta mo man lang, nung nag-break even ka na, halos 8 years ka nag-antay para lang mag-break even. Hindi ba long term na yung isang dekada? Do you have to wait 20 years for you to make money on this stuff? Well, it's something like that, diba? That's the point I'm trying to make. And mostly, the point is not to bash long-term investing. Again, it works for specific people who are busy. And it works in specific cycles. So, you have to know when your strategy will work. But the point here is, yung mga ganitong scenarios, hindi ito yung pinapakita sa investing public na talagang walang alam. Na talagang hindi lagi ito pinapakita. Right? Especially, kung newbie ka lang, na-hype ka lang, you saw all of the, ano, all of them are saying no one shows this, but hindi palagi, di ba? There are people, like me, when I went into the stock market, I didn't know stocks, this could happen. I thought eventually they'd go up after a year or two, di ba? And I'm sure a lot of people have the same experience as well. But so I'm here to show you guys the importance of risk management, the importance of how to avoid these kinds of losses in this ano, vlog, right? So let's continue. So risk management is important because it is basically learning how to handle the downside, how to handle what I showed you a while ago, right? So in risk management, there's really two important things you need to know. Number one is the use. Guys, take a lang, medyo wrong now. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Number one is the use of a stop loss and two is position sizing. For the newbies who don't know what position sizing is, I will explain it to you guys. So let's begin. What is a stop loss? Basically, it's a point in a chart where a chart at which you will sell your position at a loss. Diba? So basically, kasi, when you buy a stock, hindi naman yung lagi angat eh. So you need to have a point sa chart kung kailan ka magbibenta or when you will cut your losses short. Ito yung lagi natin narinig na cut loss, cut loss, cut loss. Like sinabi ko sa intro. Right? Because, remember, um, hindi lagi upside like I showed you. Diba? So you see stocks go down 90%, 70%. So losses... As per William O'Neill, Mark Minervini, some of the greatest traders of our lifetime, said that losses should be held at a maximum of 8%, negative 8% from the buy point. So, pag loss ka na ng, 6%, ng maximum 8%, ideally, you should be selling. Right? If, you, if you simply follow that rule na max cut loss, 8%, diba? that's proper yung position sizing mo, you'd be good to go. Right? Let, me, let me show you guys why. Diba? Bakit nga ba... Um, Bakit nga ba dapat 8%? Because losses work geometrically against you, as you can see here. So, it takes, from a 10% loss, it takes 11.1% to get to break even. From a 50% loss, it takes 100% gain, right, to break even. So, that's the reason why. Right, so, where should you place your stop loss? Dalawa lang yan. It's either you place it below support or below the breakout point. But depending on where you're buying, dalawa lang naman yan eh. You're gonna buy on the pullback to support or you're gonna buy on the break of resistance. So where should you place your stop, diba? Kapag na see your structure. What are the type of stop losses? So there's percentage stops, there's price structure-based stops, and there's indicator-based stops. So indicator-based stops, di ko natin discuss dito. It's basically using mga MACD, mga RSI pop. Sorry po ko. Mga RSI pop, mga close below moving average. But I'm gonna be talking about percentage and price structure-based stop. So let me start with a percentage-based um, a percentage based stop. Right? So here's an example of nickel, one of my trades before. Um, recently lang. So um, if you're using a percentage based stop, basically you're gonna cut all your losses kapag ano na, um, pili ka lang na fixed percentage based stop. Diba? So let's say you want 6% or you want 7%, 8%. Na na yun, basta max 8%. So let's say I bought at support, I bought at support dito, 150. If I wanted to put a 6% stop on it, Ngayon kasi bilang, measure ko lang 6%, tas linyan ko. So cut ko would be 140, below support, di ba? Here's another example, let's say you bought MAC at the breakout. Di ba? And you wanted to place your stop loss at 8%. Again, um, mark, uh, measure mo lang, markahan mo. So pag nag-below 5, cut na dapat, 8% loss na yun. Right? Eto, here's another example, let's say dito. So this is a personal trade of mine as well, I bought it at 2 pesos. If I wanted to have an 8% stop, basic lang, measure ko lang, markahan ko. Yan, 183 yung stop ko. So that's a percentage stop, fixed percentage stop. Depende na yan kung anong stop loss percentage gusto mo. Right? Pero syempre, huwag naman yung 2%, ano, 2%, 1%, medyo tight na yun. You need to give the stock room to fluctuate. So 5, 6, 7, 8% pwede. But now, here's the thing. This, um, next is the price structure based stop. So now, 
with the price with the price structure based stop i can actually place right my stop loss much closer to to um key levels diba? again either below support or below the breakout point right and since i'm basing it on the structure for so for me basta na sira yung structure syempre kung yung stock binili mo support at below support sira na yung trade idea mo yung na invalidate na yung idea mo na dapat mag bounce on support so cut ka na so ito sakto dito 2 pesos psychological level yan mga whole number 1 2 50 20 100 tas support pa so i said okay kapag nag 195 to da gg na cut na ako kasi number 1 nag below support number 2 below psych level support na dapat malakas Right, so yeah, I could I could have set my stop at 195, which I did 3% loss lang. In contrast, if you're gonna buy it on the breakout, it's the same thing. If you're gonna buy it at, at 240 or I say 236, you can know. So where would you place your stop? You can place it below the low of the previous candle, pag medyo tight lang, diba? So here, 4% lang, or you can set it lang simple lang, just below. Just give it room to fluctuate. Kasi pwede pa yan, ano, mag retest, bumalik sa loob na onte ng box, ng consolidation. So bigyan mo onte room for fluctuation. Right, so then. Yeah. Right, so now I just wanna re-emphasize, right? Yung because some people they don't want to use stop losses. This is a US stock, very sign. A lot of people don't want to use stop losses or cut their losses. Because ay babawi naman yun eventually, right? Ay average down na lang ako sabi ni ano okay lang naman yun. Or yung ha, mostly because they don't want to get a loss, diba? They see it's down seven eight percent. Ay babawi naman to eventually. That mindset will kill you, right? And I say na, lalo na, it'll kill you even more if there's a time na hindi ka nag-cut, down ka 12%, bumawi, nag-up ka pa 20%. Yun talaga, you're benefiting from bad habits. Tapos, GG ka na kasi the next time na kailangan mo mag-cut, di, ba, di mo, di mo ika-cut kasi magbabounce pa, tsaka baka magiging katulad nito. Very sad na tech company which stopped at the 2000 mar 2001 market bubble, tech bubble, went down from $250 to basically probably $5, di ko alam yung exact price. But if you waited to break even, right, you would have had to wait two decades to break even. Right? Kasi nag, yan, nag run up ulit, nag bull market, di ba? So, but now, if, if you bought sa pinakatuktok pa, kung sa pinakatuktok ka bumili, down ka pa 13% actually. Right? So, this is the reason why you need to cut your losses. Why? Because the first loss is always the best loss. And you don't know how much further down a stock can go. At the same time, not only ito, papakita ko, bakit mo kailangan mag-cut ng losses uh, mamaya. Basta yan, this just goes through the importance of not having that, ah, antay ako, break-even mentality. Kasi grabe, ipit ka dito dalawang dekada. But in ito, if you had simple stop-loss strategies, so say you bought um, CHP, ito sa 10.78 at support, but as nag-place ka ng, ng white stop, ng percentage stop, 8%. So dyan pa lang, nung nag-breakdown, mapapakat ka na. And you would have avoided the 90% drop na nangyayari kanina. Yan yung importance ang paggamit ng cut loss or stop loss. Right? And minsan, baka may ayaw din mag-cut. Why? Kasi, ano, ah, dati nag-cut ako tapos pagka-cut ko, umakyat pa. Guys, that's normal. Mark Minervini said, if you're not feeling stupid, do not manage your risk. Right here, let me give you a personal example. Si Zoom. I had Zoom, the US stock. I had it at 160 and I had a 7% stop in it. But so percentage stop ginamit ko, 7%. Okay, and then, as you can see, sa green arrow na yan, medyo nag-kiss dun sa stop loss ko. Nag-cut ako. Right? Because that was my plan and I executed it perfectly. But after nag-cut ako, bumawi end of date, so umakit 40% in in 5 days. So, I got a 7% loss, which could have been a 40% gain kung di ako nag-cut. Is this a good trade? Absolutely. Why? Because number 1, I followed my plan. Number 2, I followed my cut loss. What if this turned out to be like CHP or like Verisign na bumagsak sobra? GG na ako. So even so for me, this is a good trade. Why? Because again, I cut my losses. So I wouldn't know eh. Baka bumagsak. So yeah, bad trip. Di ko na buy back. Umakit. But that's that's life. That's trading. It happens all the time. Nasanay na ako masyado. So yeah. So what happens if you don't cut your losses? Number one, you get loss of capital. And that's obvious. Right? Yung, mga nine, yung mga 50% loss, 90% loss, you get loss of capital. So, syempre, we're here to achieve financial freedom, not financial demise, right? And second, loss of future opportunity. Why? Kasi ipit ka. Kapag nag ka mag-break even, katulad sa Verisign, say, nag-holding ka lahat ng savings mo dun. Like, loss of future opportunity, ipit ka. Instead of cutting your losses, then using that money to trade, to invest in strong, good, with strong earnings growth na whatever na malakas na stock, na ipit ka pa dun. So, missed opportunity yung nangyari. Opportunity cost. 
And third, and for me, the most important is, especially if you're an active trader, you're not even active, you trade, swing trades, all-time highs, trend follow, position trade, is loss of confidence. Because so when you experience a big loss, think mo, stupid ka na na, ay grabe yung next time na mag-trade ako, yan, nagka-5, 6 trade ka, di ka nagkatamayos, tag that down, yung trades mo 10%, 5%, 20%, 15%, 20%20% ulit, you feel like na, Ayoko na mag-trade kasi kakat ko naman yan. Ano, di ako magaling, di ako malupit. And once na you feel that, once na you go through that, and then event, and it always happens lang. Hindi na mas nasa dyan ng market. It's just coincidence. Once you go through that process of losing a lot of money, na wala confidence mo, that's when the elephant walks right in front of your face. And then wala na bala yung gun mo kasi pinaba mo na. Doon na lumabas yung prey mo. Parang ganun. So, nawawala yung confidence mo. The reason why you have to cut your losses short is para may bala ka pa to shoot at the next bagger stock, to shoot at the next strong stock. Tsaka kailangan na i-preserve mo not only your capital, but your confidence. So, next, what is position sizing? So, ito, um, bonus na lang, add-on na lang, right? So, it really answers the question, how many shares should I buy? Kasi marami yung tatanong dyan. Gano'n ko kaya may babibilin ko? Right, so, let me just give a scenario. Assuming na portfolio mo 100k. Just fa- if you follow these simple rules, solid na to. So, ma- 100k, maximum allocation mo, 20% of total portfolio. And this can be less, ha? Max 20%. Tapos, let's say, um, 20 pesos per stock. So, highly concentrated ka. You, ha- you have a good amount of your portfolio. Not too much on good stocks. Good stocks, ha? And then, maximum 5 stocks. So, diversified ka pa rin. But, you know, you can lessen this pa, this, ito, ito na yung maximum, pwede yung 15%, pwede yung 10%, depending on you. Right? And then, and then to know how many shares you should buy, um, simply click uh, calculator sa Investa, and then input mo lang, hanggang maka-compute ka kung magkano yung 20k, or let's say, gusto mo 15%, so 15k, compute mo na lang ilang shares, di ba? And guys, I will make a separate video na lang, because of course, uh, there's a concept of VAR, value at risk. It's a position sizing strategy, using ito. Meron kami risk management calculator. Right? I will make a separate, ito yung Pinapahito ko ngayon, parang basic template lang na ginagamit kapag nagsisimula pa lang. If you don't know what VAR is, if you know what VAR is, right, I will explain in a future video how to use the risk management calculator to systematically compute ilang shares pa dapat bilhin mo. So, future video na lang yun. So, maximum loss should be only 1% of total portfolio. That's the rule of thumb. Meaning, kung 100k port mo, max loss per trade should only be 1% of 100k, which is... 1,000. What's the logic behind that? It will take you 100 trades to lose all your money. Right? Kasi 100k port mo. Kung tago 1k lang loss mo, edi 100 times ka lang mangyari yun para ma-wipe out ka. Which is highly unlikely. Diba? And ako nga, I, maximum loss to. So, minsan ako 0.5 VAR pa nga. Eh. Right? So, basta yan. 1%. So, kung 500k port mo, 5k lang. Kung 1 million port mo, 10k lang. Max loss. Go 50k port mo, 500 lang. Diba? Parang ganun. So, yan. So, actually, that ends the presentation. So, next time, I'll make a separate video on position sizing strategies na uh, use specifically using VAR. So, guys, um, thank you for joining, hopefully. Right? Na appreciate nyo to. Uh, thank you for being in um, Invest of Vlog episode 8, I think. Yeah, episode 8 ata to. So, thank you guys for joining. Hopefully, may atutunan kayo sa risk management, position sizing. And, you know, kung newbie pa lang kayo, please take this into heart. Please, I um, ingrain this in your mind, in your soul, in your heart talaga because it's really the key, right? It's the name of the game, risk management. Diba? So hopefully, di ko, di ko kayo natakot, right? Dun sa yung malaking loss, it's part of the game talaga. But if you cut your losses small, di ka maka-experience ng ganun. So yun lang guys, um, this has been Instoma Trader. So hopefully, I'll provide all value sa inyo. Thank you for being in the best of vlog, 008. So kita kisaya sa susunod na episode.